bless the Lord. Truly, we bless the Lord. We thank Him for His goodness and His kindness. And thank God, first of all, for His Son, Jesus Christ, and for salvation so rich and so free. I'm so glad the Lord saw fit to save and make salvation available to all mankind. It's a blessing to know the Lord. It's a blessing to be in the house of God. It's a blessing to give him praise because truly, I don't know where my life would be. I don't know where I would be if the Lord had not saved me. And I don't take it lightly. Don't consider it a small thing. Basically, I consider it a great thing that God saved me. Amen. Amen. Some time ago, some years ago, I guess I should say, when you would talk about being saved, people would look at you like you're crazy or you had two heads. But we who are saved know it's not a strange thing, but a blessed thing that God saw fit to save and allow you to be a partaker of his, not only his favor, but his glory, and allow you to hear his voice and bring you to a place where you can say, Lord, I thank you, mm -hmm. because you know him. Not because you just heard of him, but because you know him. Yeah. What a blessing it is. What a joy divine. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Amen. If we, I want to read in your hearing, <clears throat> bless the Lord, Hebrews 10th chapter, the first through the 14th verse. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. Be encouraged on this week. Pray and fast if you can concerning our revival. We not only seek to revive it here, we seek to revive our hearts, our outside, as well as our inside. Amen. With the glory of God. This is not something we do just to be doing it. Amen. But rather, we have a point, and God has given us. Amen. Instruction of the Holy Ghost. That this is what we ought to do at this season. Amen. We are in such a season that we believe the children, boys and girls, men and women will cry out, what must I do to be saved? Not just for this coming week, but throughout this coming year and the year to come. Amen. 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 If you love the Lord, if you love the Lord, you will support the work of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hebrews 10, 1 through 14. Amen. Hebrews 10, 1 through 14. For the law having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices, which they offered year by year, continually make the comers thereunto perfect. For then they would not have ceased to be offered, because that the worshippers once purged, should have no more conscience of sins. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sin. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices, for sin thou hast no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come to the bottom of the book, it is written of me to do thy will, O God. Above when, above when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings, and an offering for sin thou wouldest not, neither had its pleasure therein which are offered by the law. Then said I, Lo, I come to do thy will. O God, he taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest standeth daily, ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sin. But this man, after he offered once, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering, he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. 
May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. Bless God. Thank God for the word of God. The word of God is right, right by itself. That is one of the deceptions of the enemy is that you don't need to read as well as hear the word of God. I know. But just in reading the word of God, you can get happy because it begins to speak to the bone, the marrow, the soul, and the spirit, letting us know the purpose and the plan as well as the will of God yes. for you and I. You know, God does have a plan. God didn't haphazardly throw things together, but God does have a plan. He has a plan for you as well as for me. And I'm so glad that before we even came into the mind of God, God had a plan for our existence. He had a plan for our purpose. He had a, a plan really for our survival. He knew what man would do before man was created. And still God had a plan. Yeah. You know, some of us, if we had known that our invention, if you will, or our creation would fail, we may not even take the opportunity to bring it to pass. But God knew man from the beginning and yet saw fit to create man. Isn't that good to know that God even knew what man was going to do and yet God still had a purpose for us? Who believe. Thank God. Thank God. He didn't get tired. He didn't throw it in. He didn't just throw his hands up and throw the drawing board away. But God said, you know what? I'm still going to make man because man is whom I desire to delight myself in. And I think sometimes we get away from that. We don't recognize that God enjoyed the fact of his creation and wanted to take pleasure in it. So he created man. He didn't sit back and say, oh, I done messed up. I'm sorry. God said, listen, no, what I've done, I've done, and I'm going to bring to pass the, not only the purpose, but the plan, and above all, the fulfillment of that which I started. I'm so glad that God can start something and God can finish it. He don't leave it haphazard. He don't leave it empty. He don't leave it wanting. I was thinking on the way to church today, and I thought about it. He said, whatever you stand in need of, whatever is the desire of your heart, you know, God can bring it to pass. God will drop something in your spirit and make you think about something and before long and then by and by it seems to show right up. It's like what you needed, he knew. So God said, I'm going to bring it to pass. That's the kind of God we serve. Who would serve a man? Who would serve a statue? Who would serve something that cannot infinitely go from the beginning to the end and bring to pass that which is impossible except the hand of God is in it. God brought you out. Nobody else brought you out but God. God made a way. Nobody else made a way but God. And I'm glad about it. I'm glad. Even in our imperfection, God had a purpose. God had a plan. Even in, our, in the fact that we don't do like we ought to do all the time, God still has mercy. God is still of long suffering. God is still compassionate. God still reaches out and grabs us in the midst of our folly. God is able. Glory. He said, listen, I can take that clay and keep pounding it and shaping it until I bring it to pass. That which I have purposed for its creation. What a mighty God we serve. Glory to God. And God will find you where you are. Mm, I'm so glad we can't hide from it. We can't shield ourselves from his presence. We can't cover our ears and hope he don't hear us. <laughs> we can't cover our eyes and hope he don't see us. God is God and sees all and knows all. Yeah. And yet he still has compassion yeah. on man. My Glory to God. Glory to God. And, and when, when you look at the state of man, you'd say, listen, oh Lord, God must be long-suffering. Because yeah. he's still putting up with us. He's yeah. still tolerating our rebellion. Yeah. He's still tolerating our uh, arrogance. He's still tolerating the fact that men still don't serve God. And yet, God is still merciful. Yes. Glory to God. You know, sometimes you're praying for folk, you're believing folk, you're even trusting God for things in your own life, and God still tolerates you and is still merciful. He remembers when you said you were going to do what you were going to do and didn't do it. And yet, he was still merciful. Yeah, yeah. Mm, you pro 
promise because you wanted to get out of what you was in. And you promised, God, if you do this for me, I'll do that for you. And you didn't do it. And God is still merciful. Glory to God. No man would do you like that. No person, no woman, no man, no boy, no girl. It would only take God to reach out and have that level of compassion. Amen. He said, I created you for a purpose. Yeah. And if I got to go through it, you, I'm in there with you. Hey, man, if I got to do it to bring you out, if I got to help you to make it through, I'll do it yeah. because I'm God. Glory to God. That's the kind of God we serve. It ain't over. Glory. Until God says it over. It's not finished. Until God says it's finished. Amen. Amen. Mm. So whatever hopes and plans and dreams you have, they're still in your spirit. They still bother you. They still wake you up in the middle of the night. They still speak to your heart when you need to be spoken to. Guess what? God is still going to bring it to pass. God said, listen, it's not fruit yet. You just got to wait a while. Look at the vine. Just wait for the fruit. It'll be there in a minute. Mm. I determined it. I spoke it. You wouldn't be struggling with it if I hadn't spoken in you. Amen. Amen. That's the kind of God we serve. God has always had a plan for man and a purpose for man. But I might e e even consider on this morning, I was thinking even in our text, it's an interesting text, it's a blessed text because it really shows us the, the completion and the fullness and the uh, 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 satisfactory offering that Jesus was once and for all. Didn't have to do it again. He did it once and that was it. He satisfied, amen. The payment. He satisfied what was needed and necessary to bring us to a place of acceptance in God. And if I might use the word, it would be my sin, amen, and his blood. And really to do this justice, talking about sin, I got to deal with the sin first, I got to deal with the blood second. But the point is, is that it was our sin, it was our, amen, our negligence, our disobedience that caused God to do what he had to do in order to save his humanity. Amen. He created humanity. He created man. He created human. So God did what God would do because he's a divine creator. He said, Let, I'm putting a plan in place that man can be spared. Actually, not only spared, be better off as a result of me being in the process. Amen. Amen. Aren't you better off now that you're saved, you that are saved? Aren't you better off yeah. knowing that God is on your side, even though you may be going through something now and it may seem little more than a minute? Aren't you better off with yeah. him than without him? Aren't you better off in the light? Glory to God than in the darkness. Aren't you better off? I know you may not be feeling well, you may be hurt, you may have to make some pain, you might have some bills due. All of us have the same thing going on at one time or another. But aren't you better off? Glory to God. As you came into the light, aren't you better off? Yes, sir. And if you're not better off, then I have to question if you're in the light at all. That's right. Amen. That's right. If you're in the light, you are better off. Amen. You may not admit it. You may struggle with it. You may act like you're not in the light, but guess what? You are. When God get a hook on you, a lot of times he lets you wiggle for a minute until you get it right. Glory to God. Glory. And let you know, listen, you're better off. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. I go to God sometime and pray. God says, stop complaining. Mm -hmm. Amen. What you, what you fussing about something you can't change? Mm -hmm. You fussing about something that's part of me and something I have to handle. So wait till the fruit is on the vine. Be all right with it until I do what I do. Amen. But wait on glory to God. Wait on the Lord. The Bible says, and be of good courage. Amen. It takes strength. It takes compassion. It takes courage to wait on God. Amen. Some things don't happen overnight. Some things take a while, but yet God will bring you through. Amen. Amen. And you're still better off. My sin and his blood. What a, what a contrast. Amen. It seems like from one end to another. It seems like as if there's no connection, but, but God, by his infinite wisdom and by his perfect plan, fixed it so that I could be made in his righteousness, even though I'm a sinner by nature. It's in me to sin. It's, it's what I do as a sinner. Amen. But God saw fit to save me. 
so that I would have a choice. I would have an opportunity to walk in his righteousness. Amen? Amen. 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 And as I was meditating, I thought about this. Even he, uh, All mankind is guilty. We know that. But a lot of times you've got to remind folks because oftentimes the, the, the deception of sin, or should I say sin in our nature, is that just that because I'm getting better, I'm getting better than you. And that's what self-righteousness is. Because I'm doing better now, I, you know, I, my, my brother was telling me that he was out in front of the, um, one of the stores and they weren't accepting the, 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 the government cards anymore because of the government shutdown. And he said, folks were going crazy in the store. They were just going nuts. And he was somewhere in Norristown. And he said, man, he said, he made an announcement. And you thought they said that the, uh, 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 the, the place, the Twin Towers had hit or something. You know, it, it was just crazy. It was, it was mayhem. It was bedlam. It was just nonsense because all of a sudden, that which they embraced and that which they hung to, and all of us get some kind of assistance somehow. And they cut it off. No longer would they accept. Say so you got to wait a two, few days before you get what you need to have right now. And he said it was just, it was just total chaos. That's why we got to pray for our elected officials. And keep remembering they're elected officials. Pray for them. Pray for them. God is still sovereign, but pray for them. Amen. That the will of God be so. Amen. Amen. So. Sin will make you think because you're doing better. Well, I don't have to worry about an access card. Or I'm, I'm doing pretty good now. I'm getting three meals a day, and I'm getting a check at the end of the week. So that will make me appear, or at least in my mind, make me think that I'm better off than you who are where I used to be. That's the sin nature. It will cause you to look down on them that uh, used to be you. Amen. So God had to send his son. So that we would have an understanding, a comprehension of what it was to really be free, to really be set free. One of the things that always amazes me is that when the, our forefathers were let go as a result of freedom from slavery, many did not leave because they didn't understand freedom. Didn't understand it. And often that's the time the way it is with being a believer now that I'm free from the pains and the penalty as well as the strength of sin, I really don't know how to operate apart from it. I really don't know what to do now, or should I say, what to do next. So the Lord came to give us power, not only power, but strength and wisdom, how to walk in newness of life. Amen. And no longer be a slave to the power that used to empower us. Yes. Amen. My sin and his blood. And I'm so glad that God said, listen, I'm going to deal with it even from the beginning. David said something in Psalms 51 and 5. He said, listen, he said, behold, I was shaken in iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. You can't get away from it. All of us were born in sin. Amen. And sin basically is transgression against God. It's transgressing the will of God, the word of God. It's, it's, it's transgressing really that which we know and that which we don't know. It's sins of omission and sins of commission against God. It's saying to God that I'm not going to do what you say. And once I heard what you said, I'm still not going to do it. And once I know to do right and still don't do it, I'm still not. That's transgression. It's being guilty before God because I choose to go against God. My love. But our very nature went against God. We were sinners by nature. That's right. <laughs> Listen, I don't care how grand your mother was or your father was or your, your parents were. You were still born, amen, a sinner. You were born under the authority and the power and the motions of sin. That's right. You came in or came out, if you will, enslaved under its authority and its power. David said, I was shaped in iniquity. And in sin, as lovely as it was, they were married, they loved one another, you still were born in sin. Amen. You still, it was still sin. It was, sin was still the issue. You weren't separated from the old Adamic nature where Adam disobeyed God and, and because of that all humanity 
fell under a curse. And it was a curse. They fell under a curse. So the sin curse fell on all of them that came after Adam. And since none of us was with Adam, we all came after. So it applies to all of us, the sin nature. And oftentimes people try to make light of it or act as if it's no has no more authority on them as believers and that they don't have to struggle. Yes, it's out there. I walk in the power of God's word, but I don't deceive myself and think that because now I have power over making the right, the wrong choice, that I no longer will make a wrong choice. That's a lie. Yes. Amen. If I say I have no sin, look at 1 John, the first chapter. He said, if I say I have no sin, then I'm a liar. Amen. You know, and I make God a liar. So I got to understand that even though I'm in the world, I choose not to be of the world. But nevertheless, I'm in the world. I'm in a case, I'm in a state. Until God changes his body, my body will always be affected by what goes on in this world, in this level. Amen. Glory to God. My sin, if you will, is blood. Romans 3 and 23 says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the glory of God, we know, is Jesus. He's the one that brought forth the glory as we had never seen God before, but because we've seen him, we know what glory is. And one of the things Jesus told me, he said, if I go away, he said, I'm going to send you another comforter. I'm going to send somebody just like me, so I'm going to send my glory Amen. To reside in you. So that the power you had when I was walking with you will now dwell in you and allow you to walk in the strength of my will. Yes. See, because there are some times that in our Christian walk, we do things, but we do them as a result of what we've heard. And then there are other times God, as a result of what we heard, has to strengthen us from within in order to accomplish his will. In other words, you wouldn't have done what you did, even though you heard it, except God hadn't stirred up on the inside his will and his word. Amen. Amen. That's why the comforter is necessary. You can't be a believer apart from the Holy Spirit. So when you get saved, the Holy Spirit takes up residence so you can walk in the strength of God's word. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Why? Because everything within you, everything within you, is fighting against that which is trying to walk you in the perfection God has preferred for you. Amen. Glory to God. All have sinned and come short of his glory, but his glory right now is in me. Mm -hmm. So in the fact that I'm a sinner by nature, yet I can walk in the righteousness of God because he lives in me. It doesn't make me better than you. It doesn't make you better than me. But rather it says, listen, I'm a new creation yeah. created in Christ Jesus. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things, everything from A to Z becomes new yeah. because he lives on the inside of me. Hello. That which I used to do, I don't do anymore by choice. Okay. Let me change that and then let me say that again. Because I choose not to do it because of the power that lives in me. Because people will often try to tempt you and test you and try you mm -hmm. and say, listen, you can, you got freedom to do anything. You sure do. Mm -hmm. Freedom to do anything. But I choose not to do that now because of the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. I can say anything to you I choose to say. But I choose to say what God is, is should I say, correct in the eyes of God to you. Amen. 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 I hear folks talk about, oh, so-and-so used to cuss like a sailor. I don't know why they always say sail. I was in the Air Force. We cussed too, so in the Air Force. And it was always amazing me, and they would always use that phrase. But once you get saved, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit begins to convict your speech so that you are, may well be tempted to be profane, but the Holy Ghost gives you strength to speak the right thing. Amen. Amen. Gives you strength to do what you wouldn't normally do in the natural. Mm. But I thank God that we don't walk in the natural after he saves us. God allows us by his mercy to walk glory.
glory of God in the supernatural. Don't know how it's accomplished. Don't know how I did it. All I know that God did it through me. Amen. He allows you to walk as he walked. Not by your own strength nor your own might, but by his spirit. Amen, amen, amen. Remember what Jesus told Peter? He said, listen, he said, I pray for you. He said, when you are converted or changed, he said, I pray for you. He said, because Satan is out to have you. He said, but I pray for you. And because I pray for you, you're going to be strengthened to be able to walk in my supernatural power. Yeah. Peter was not the same after Pentecost. When Jesus took up residence in him, the same Peter who had denied him, had cussed him, wow. had said he didn't know him, didn't stood know up him. mightily and said, men and brethren, these are not drunken as you suppose. But this is, here, now here is a fisherman speaking of the prophet Job as if he studied the work. But God will give you something to speak even if you hadn't studied it. God will speak through you and allow you to speak what he desires you to say. Amen. You can sit back sometimes and say, I don't know why I said that. But I'll tell you why he said it. God spoke it through you. Amen. In spite of the old nature, God gives you a new creation so you can walk in newness of light. Glory to God. 1 Corinthians 15, 22 says this, For as in Adam all die, amen, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Mm -hmm. Adam, being of the Adamic nature and being Adam being my father Adam, if you will, all died. All that came after Adam had a sentence of death on their life because of sin. Right. Amen. They would live for a while. That's why as sin increased, their lifespans got shorter. If you look at the Bible, you go through the Bible, you look at that. As sin increased, the lifespans got shorter. Amen. Yes. Folks, you would live six, seven, eight hundred years, nine hundred years, but it was a But as sin increased, Amen. Their lifespans got shorter because of the evil and the, if you will, the corruption of not only mankind, but the corruption of nature itself. The Bible says that in the, in the last days when the, when the Lord raptures the church and when he comes back and gives a new heaven and a new earth, that creation itself is groaning and moaning to be redeemed, yeah. to be changed. Because sin violated not only man, it violated creation. Amen. Glory to God. Thank but we have a God that has a plan not only for man, but he's already mapped out creation. Glory to God. As a result of one sin. See, Adam was in a perfect environment. Sinless. Hey, no conscience of sin. In other words, Adam couldn't have thought wrong if he had to. My love. He was in a state of innocence. Yeah. Yeah. He, didn't, he didn't even know what wrong was. It had to be introduced. Glory to God. It had to be introduced into his life. That's why sin has to be imputed to us. Amen. Or should I say righteousness has to be imputed to us. It has to be introduced into our life as sin was introduced into the life of our forefather Adam. Amen. Amen. There's an accountability, which impute, imputation means accountability. In other words, God said, listen, I'm going to hold you accountable by my righteousness. Whereas we were guilty as a result of sin, he said, now I'm going to hold you accountable as to the righteousness that I make available to you. Oh, my sin. Glory to God. In Adam all died, but in Christ we all shall be made alive. God had a plan to redeem man from his state. God had a purpose and a plan, and we continually talk about it. Look, look at uh, uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 15 and 45. I'm going to go to it. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. That the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Yeah. Christ is often referred to as the second Adam. Amen. Amen. The humanity that God determined before the foundation of the world had not Adam sinned. So God said, I got a plan. I got a ram in the bush. 
Amen. I'm going to bring about my perfect perfection regardless of what takes place. I got a plan. Yeah. See, that's, what, that's what's so good about God is that when your plans fail, God always has a plan. Amen. When you let go and let God, then you can understand what is supernatural and what is natural. God will let you know, I got this. Well, meanwhile, you threaten yourself, can't understand why it hasn't taken place. He says, trust me. Amen. Come unto me, all ye that live. He said, take my word, take my you. Trust me. Give, me. give me the glory, do my name. Yes. The first Adam was a living soul. Amen. But the second Adam was a quickening spirit. Yeah. Amen. 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 Thank God for Amen. Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. In spite of God's plan, the payment for sin is still death. It's still death. So we have to have victory and only victory in Christ Jesus. Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death. Yes. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Man was sinful by nature, we know that, and needed to be reconciled, brought back to God. Romans 5 and 12 says this, Wherefore, as by one sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, that for that all have sinned. One man sinned, and all became sinners. My love. One man sinned, One man. and all became sinners. He said, for until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is no law. There's no accountability if they hadn't been told that this was wrong, or there hadn't been a judgment for the wrong. So as long as there was no law, amen, which law was our schoolmaster, but as long as there was no law, there was no knowledge of sin. Yeah. Amen. Didn't know if it was wrong or right. You just did as you pleased or did as you felt. But God said, listen, I'm going to do it even greater than the law. I'm going to put it in your hearts mm -hmm. so that you know by the Holy Spirit which direction to take, which choice to make, which decision to, to, to abide by. Amen. He said, listen, where there is no law, he said, there is not imputed. And he said, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses even over them that had not sinned after the same similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. Adam was perfect. Amen. Christ is perfect. And even though we didn't sin like Adam sinned in the same manner, we're still guilty of the same transgression because sin passed upon all men. Yes. Amen. Amen. We became guilty as a result of association. Guilty. We're flesh and we're blood. Mm -hmm. And Adam was flesh and blood and had a soul, so therefore we are guilty yeah, thank you. as a result of his disobedience. Amen. Amen. God made us. He didn't make us angelic. He didn't make us a spirit. He made us flesh and blood. Body, a soul, and a spirit. God did it. God operated it. God made it happen. We were formed from the dust of the ground. Yes. Amen. Made out of nothing and God made us something. Yes. Therefore, even though we did not do it as Adam did it, we are just as responsible and just as tied up in it as if we had done it ourselves. Yes. All humanity, all creation, amen, suffered under one act. Amen. And there was only one individual who could bring us out, and he had to be God. That's why the Jehovah Witness, that's why a lot of the other cults that don't believe that Jesus is Lord, they put him down and call him less than God. Nobody else Nobody. could have brought you out but God. Amen. God had to put on flesh. God had to come and redeem you. Had he not done it, you'd yet be in your sin. It was a curse. All mankind, from beginning for, to the middle to the end, were all condemned as a result of one man's act of rebellion. Amen. Yes. And the only one that could fix it, the only one that could change it, yes. the only one that could make it right had to be God. And God said, listen, I'm going to put on flesh. 
Now he says, listen, practice righteousness as you're living, as your lifestyle. Look what it says here. He says that he that committed sin or practices sin is of the devil. It has its origin in the demonic, in the devil. If I choose to practice disobedience before God and it's known or unknown and I'm told to correct my behavior and I continue to practice it with no conscience, then it has its origin in the devil. Jesus. Amen. Come on, all of us have been chastised. All of us have been corrected for our behavior. But if there's no correction, then I'm really not a son or a daughter. The Bible says I'm a bastard. I'm really, I'm, I'm homeless. I'm an orphan. Why? Because God says, listen, even if I got to chastise you, even if I got to challenge you in your faith, he says, listen, you'll be, you'll be, you'll have correction in your spirit to say, okay, Lord, I'm ready to do your will now. But if there's no correction, and if there's no obedience, he says it has its origin in the devil. Look at this now. He said, for the devil sinned from the beginning. And the interesting part, the devil used to be in heaven in the sense of a place of authority. The devil occupied a position in heaven. But he rose up and said, you know what? I'm going to be like the most high. I'm the biggest thing on the block. They ought to have a parade on Broad Street for me. Yes. Amen. And when he rose up, God had to cast him out. Yes. Because understand this, God don't share his glory with nobody. Amen. That goes for me as well as you. Come on. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. If anybody gets applause, it better be God. Amen. Bless God. Bless God. Oh, glory. Look at this now. For this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Amen. What purpose? For the purpose of uh, uh, giving us strength not to what? Commit sin. That's why Jesus came to destroy his work. Whosoever is born of God, meaning us, does not commit sin or does not practice sin. I used to, I come out of the, the holiness church and they used to preach that you didn't sin at all, which is a lie. You don't practice it anymore. You are conscious of sin, whereas before it didn't matter to you at all. Now you're conscious of it. You're convicted of it. I'm not condemned by it, but I'm convicted of it. Yes, thank you. Glory. Romans 8 and 1. There, there, there's therefore now no condemnation to them who walk in the spirit and don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Glory to God. Look at this now. He said, listen, whosoever is born of God yes. does not commit or practice sin for his seed remaineth in him and he cannot sin because he is born oh. of God. The Apostle John says, listen, he says, I'm going to go a little further than practice. I'm going to say this, that if the seed of God is in you, you can, with good conscience, practice sin. You can't be a sinner no more in practice because the seed of God is in you. Look at this now. I'm going to prove it to you. Turn to Genesis. Turn to Genesis. Glory to God. Turn and keep your hand also in 1 John. But turn to, turn to Genesis 3 and 15. 3 and 15. Glory to God. Glory to God. Look at this now. After Adam and Eve had sinned, God laid down some punishments as a result of their disobedience. So here it is. As a result of their disobedience. And he was speaking to the enemy. He told the enemy that he would be uh, 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 cursed. He cursed it. And, and he was speaking to a serpent, or should I say in the form of a serpent. And he says, listen, he said, curse it, you be every, uh, the beast, snake, you're going to, whatever serpent, some say snake, some say other things, but the point is, is that in the 14th verse, 3 and 14, he says this, and the Lord said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above all beasts in the field, upon thy belly shalt thou go, thou shalt uh, thus shalt thou eat all the days of our life, so we must, must uh, uh, consider it to be a snake. And I will put enmity or division. I will put division between thee and the woman. Now we know all life 
is formed in the woman. But the seed to give life is in the man. So except the man and the woman come together, there is no life. Amen. Don't tell me what they're doing now. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. All right. And in thee and woman. Now, and between thy seed and her seed. He said, listen, Satan. He said, your seed, which is a seed of rebellion. He said, I'm going to put a division between your seed and her seed. Hey, here's something. A woman doesn't have a seed. Unless a seed is given to her by a man, she does not have a seed. She's going to have a baby apart from a seed being deposited. But he said, I'm going to put a division between your seed and her seed. And if the scripture tells us that the seed of God is in us so that we can't commit sin, then it lets me know that there's a divine impartation in the process. Amen. God had to do something in order to allow this to happen. Amen. Why? Because... A woman doesn't have a seed. Now turn to Isaiah 7 and 14. Isaiah 7 and 14. As you can see, you know this is going to be a two-part. Glory to God. Isaiah 7 and 14. Look what the prophet Isaiah says here. Here's the seed now, the seed of a woman. Because a woman can't have a seed. Isaiah 7 and 14 says, listen. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. There's no way a virgin can conceive and have a child except God do a supernatural impartation. So therefore, God said, listen, even after man's rebellion, he told Satan, your seed of rebellion will never infect, I mean, it'll never infect my seed that's going to be deposited in a version by the Holy Ghost. He said there'll never be the same, there'll be a division between the two. You're never going to corrupt what is perfect again. You're never going to come between me and my creation. He said, I'm going to put enmity between her seed and your seed. And so therefore God met a virgin, My Lord. deposited himself so that we would have victory over sin so that we who are born now in the spirit are born out of perfection and not out of corruption. Look at this now, go a little further. Go if you will to St. John, uh, John 1 and 12. St. John 1 and 12. Because, see, the sin nature, we had to be created. We had to be transformed. We had to be newly created as a result of the rebellion. Amen. And as a result of the sin of Adam. Glory to God. Look at this now. Uh, St. John 1 and 12. But as many as received him, meaning Christ Jesus. Amen. That's why the word is so powerful. When you accept him into your life, he comes into you, takes up residence, and dwells in you. Look what it says here. But as many as received him, meaning Christ, to them gave he power. There's no way in the world we would survive if God did not release his power in our life as a result of being saved. You couldn't survive. You couldn't live. If God didn't give me power to live saved, amen, there's no need being saved. What am I being saved from? I know the wrath of God because sin must be judged. But God didn't just save me so I wouldn't have to be judged. God saved me so I can live a life fruitful, amen, and, 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 and honor him with my living. Amen. But as many as received him, then he gave power. Look at this now. To become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Now here it is. Which were born, not of blood. Amen. So it wasn't an earthly conception, nor of the will of the flesh. It wasn't something I made happen because I thought about it a lot. God said, uh-uh. He said, nor of the will of man, but of God. It wasn't something I conceived in my flesh. It wasn't nothing I conceived in my mind. It wasn't nothing I conceived in my environment, but rather God did it by his will. Amen. Amen. My sin. He had to go to bat for me. He had to go to the point, amen, that the very origin had to be 
holy. Amen. It couldn't come from anything that was subject to death. Amen. It had to be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. It had to be righteous. Yeah. Okay. It had to be acceptable to God even before it was created. Amen. Amen. He did it. My sin. Wow. Lord, and yeah, see, that's how devastating sin is. God said, listen, I got to eradicate it. I got to wipe it out. I got to do away with its memory. And so I sent Jesus. Come on, man. Come Amen. Born of a virgin. Yeah. Impossible. That's why it takes faith to believe God. Because if somebody tries to figure it out, you'd never be saved. Yeah. But it's interesting, once you get saved, because yes. we don't walk by sight, but we walk by faith, and once we get saved, then we begin to understand how God did it. Woo, glory. That's why we can rejoice in what he's done. Amen. I, I wasn't there when, uh, when Noah was uh, crafting the, the ark. But understand this. I got an idea. Glory. How it was done. Because I've connected. I've tied up. I'm, I'm, I'm in the hand of God now. And God has given me information that I never could have learned in a book. God has given me information that I never could have studied for. There's some wisdom I have now that could only come from God. Yeah. Right. That's right. Only come from God. My Lord. Amen. I was stupid before that. Yes. Amen. Y'all say amen a little too quickly. <laughs> amen. But the sin nature will cause you to rebel even when you want to make up your mind. You have to say something like this. Well, I don't know why I said that. The old nature seeks to overtake the new nature. There's always a struggle. I had a preacher argue with me one time. There ain't no two natures. I said, okay. Go try to do what you want to do for God and see if you don't have a struggle. See if you're not, uh, amen, torn between two opinions. Mm -hmm. Every Sunday morning, every Wednesday night. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they ain't going to miss me anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or we come to church and say, listen, I'm glad I'm here now. Y'all can stop. Yeah. The old nature. The old nature. It, 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 it provokes itself. It envies itself. It causes you to think you're something. That you're right. Right. That's right. That's right. Right. And if it had not been for God. Yes. Woo, glory. Oh. Amen, amen, amen. Elijah couldn't have done it. Moses couldn't have done it. Christ had to do it. My Lord. Oh, that's right. That's right. Unspotted. Ooh, that's why his blood settled it all. Amen. You can work all your life and still not work for God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can do all you think you got to do to do right and still be wrong. Yeah. Thank you. But if you walk in newness of life and in the grace of God, God will give you favor to know that you're walking in his obedience. Amen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop here, beloved. I'm going to stop. Glory to God. I don't want to stop, but I got to stop.